Ironized Yeast presents Lights Out, Everybody. It is later than you think. Lights Out brings you stories of the supernatural and the supernormal. Dramatizing the fantasies and the mysteries of the unknown. We tell you this frankly. So if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you calmly but sincerely to turn off your radio now. My name, Arch Obler. Tonight, another in our series of tales of the weird and the unusual. And this one is really unusual. It's about that little god of chance, the one who flips a coin and makes us rich men or beggar men. But before we start, Frank Martin has something to say to you. And I'd like to suggest, friends, that success isn't all a matter of luck or chance. No, success depends largely on you yourself. You can't hope to get ahead if you're miserably thin and tired and nervous. But you needn't necessarily go on feeling that way. If your trouble is vitamin B and iron shortage, then take ironized yeast tablets. They give you both vitamin B and iron. Thus, when you need them, help two ways to build you up. Help two ways to restore strength and pep. Men and women by the thousands who only needed more vitamin B and iron say, thanks to ironized yeast, they've gained new vigor, new weight and strength, often in a few weeks. That's right, ironized yeast tablets. All druggists have them. And now, lights out. Everybody. You say the world is planned. I say the world is chance. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Cut it out, Cut it out, you're rocking the boat. Babe, babe, this is really fun. Will you quit doing the Big Apple? This ain't Roxy. This is a canoe. Mm, smell that air. Isn't it just terrific? Yeah, there's too much of it. Dottie Nelson, don't you talk that way. You know mighty well we came out here to get healthy. All right, all right, so I'll get healthy even if it kills me. <laughs> sure was a funny way to pick out a place to go on a vacation, wasn't it? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, and this place was mo. <laughs> well... What if we picked out Alaska or Cicero or someplace like that? At least this way. Oh, we... Daddy, look. Look at what? On the shore over there, all those big flowers. Flowers? Oh, for Pete's sake, the way you were wiggling, I thought it was Indian. Come on. Let's go pick them. Okay, by me, as long as you do the paddling. Hey, look out, Girl Scout. You're driving over the curb. Land ho! Oh, hey, you tear the bottom out of this battleship and we'll have to pay for it. Oh, I didn't hurt it. Come on, get out and help me pick these poses. All right, all right. As long as there's no keep off the grass signs. Dottie Nelson, will you get it through that head of yours at this ain't Central Park? This is honest to gosh wilderness. Says you. Make mine vanilla with onions. Aren't they just the loveliest flowers you ever saw? Two bits were right in the middle of some poison ivy. Hey, hey, look. What? The boat, it's drifting off. Well, catch it, quick. What do you mean, catch it? I can't swim. Dot, do something. Do something. Don't just stand Don't there. Don't you yell at me. You're the one to blame. You should have pulled the boat higher out of the water. Oh, Dot, what do we do? They'll make us pay for it. Who cares about the boat? I'm worried about us. Us? Yes. How are we going to get back to that camp? Well, we can walk. Oh, you sure must have strained your brain thinking up that one. Oh, you needn't get so fresh about it. You certainly don't think all I wanted right, the boat. All right, all right. Let's hang up the boxing gloves and get out of here. Dot. Huh? How dark it's getting. So what? Why is it getting so dark? Listen, lame brain. I may be just a hillbilly from 10th Avenue, but I know clouds when I see them. So they're clouds, you know. Clouds, rain, remember? Uh, I'm scared. Oh, what have you got to be scared about all of a sudden? Come on, come on. I'll get you back to camp. No. Wait, Dot. Huh? That's not the way. we got to go the other way. Listen, lame brain, I'll do the path finding. But you're wrong. You're all mixed up. It's the other way. Is that a path or isn't it? But there's a path going the other way. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, what will we do? You go one way and I'll go the other. Oh, no, we won't. I'm scared. We'll stick together. Okay, we'll flip for it as usual. 
I had a nickel. Oh, yeah, here it is. Heads, we take the right-hand path. Tails, we take the left-hand path. All right. Okay, call it. Heads. Oh, heads it is. Okay, Girl Scout, lead the way. No, no, you, you go first. Okay, but if this path leads up to, up to the middle of nowhere, so help me, I'm going to pull you apart like a herring. So dark. Keep moving, keep moving. Wait, Dot. Well, what's the matter now? It's more posy. Listen. You hear it? So help me a fiddle. I told you we were heading the right Will way. You turn over that. I told you so. Record and keep moving. I'm hungry. Keep moving. All right. Keep moving. I'll keep moving. Well, this must be the front door of the joint. What's that? How funny. Oh, what's funny? Now, that's pretty music. The place hasn't any windows. The door's all I care about. You think we ought to disturb whoever's playing? Disturb is right one side, Lady Gwendolyn. I'll do the knocking. Doesn't seem to hear us. Oh, he'll hear me. There. That did it. It's... Uh... Awful thrilling, isn't it? Okay, you do the thrilling and you'll do the paying if they can't find that boat. Of all the junk. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Oh, we're sorry to bust in like this. Well, we sort of lost our way. I mean, our boat, and we thought maybe you of could tell course, us... Of course, of course. Won't you step in? I'm more than glad to see you. Well... Of course we will. Come on, Di. Okay. It's going to rain. Yeah, we found that out. We certainly were lucky to find this place. We heard you playing the violin. Now, did you really? If you'll step this way. Oh, Dot, isn't he the strangest man? Yeah. Turned his face away. He must be terribly ugly. Oh, forget it. Go on, keep moving. If you'll step in here, I have a small fire going. Kind of dark. <laughs> yeah. If you'll do me the honor of being seated. All right. Oh, boy, what a chair. Yes, it's most comfortable. Now, if I might be permitted to introduce myself, I'm John Boyd. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Boyd. I'm Laura, and she's Dottie. Don't believe me, mister, it's a pleasure. Do my dogs hurt? May I sit and talk with you? There's so very much to talk about. Well, we should be getting back to oh, camp. Yeah. Oh, we got plenty of time. And anyway, mister, you don't know what a lifesaver you were. Was I? Really? <laughs> Anything gets Laura scared is to be in the dark. All those rain clouds. And then I must apologize for not having more light here. You see, my eyes... Oh, that's all right, Mr. Uh... Boy. <laughs> I never could remember names. I, I guess I don't really mind it being dark in here. It's sort of like a nice tea room. <laughs> really? <laughs> don't mind her, Mr. Boyd. She was hit on the head by a bowling ball when very young. Oh, Ned, <laughs> Will you listen to that wind? The storm will come in just a few more moments. Oh, excuse me, the willies. Is your wife home, Mr. Boyd? I'm quite alone. Sure must get lonely out here. It was. Very lonely. Getting awful dark in here, isn't it? The storm... Oh. Oh, don't be alarmed. A door banging in the wind... If you'll excuse me for just a moment, I'll fix it. Okay. Okay. Dad. Huh? Let's get out of here. Well, why? You're scared, too. Oh, huh? I'm not scared. I... He looks so funny and shadowy in the dark. Dad. Huh? What's that funny smell? Yeah. I noticed it. Like medicine. He walks and holds his head so funny. Hmm. Now, why does he keep away from the light of the fire? Let's get out of here. Yeah, okay. We'll make a run for it before the rain starts. I suggest you stay. Yes, I suggest you stay. Come on, Dot. You'd better stay, my dear. The storm, it's close at hand. Yeah? Well, something tells me I'd rather be out there than in here. Me too. Well, I'll be seeing you. Come on, Laura. Okay. Mister? Yes? Oh, mister, the door's locked. I know it. You know it? Hey, listen... It's a big idea locking that door on us. You let us out of here, mister. Mr. Boyd, or whatever your name is. Didn't you hear me? What's the big idea locking the door? I have some very interesting things to talk about with both of you. We, we want to get out of here. Come on, come on. Unlock the door. We'll scream our heads off. There's no one around for 15 miles. Are you going to open that door? I suggest you sit down. Give us that key. Now open that door. I tell you... Dot! Why did you... 
sorry I had to do that. I'm really a very gentle man. understand each other quite clearly now, won't we? Sit down. Sit down, the both of you. Sit down, I say. There. Now that we understand each other so clearly, we can talk with each other quietly now, can't we? You know, I dislike loud talking intensely. You see, I'm really a very gentle man. Please, Dot. Don't cry anymore. That's excellent advice, my dear Laura. Excellent advice. Dotty, I suggest you stop crying. Dot, please, do as he says. I... I'm all right. Of course, you're quite all right. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Let me tell you of chance. Here I was, a quiet, contented man, sitting here all alone, and yet I was not quite content. Chance brought you here to me, and chance found me quite discontented. As a man of thorough saneness, as a man of infinite realism, I realize that this fortuitous circumstance of our meeting, fanciful as it might have been, is a welcome opportunity for me. Uh, opportunity? What? To feel my loneliness permanently. To get myself a wife. Wife? It is crazy. I suggest, my dear Laura, that you substitute another word, a kindlier one than the one you're using. Oh. Yes, I said, a wife. Laura, oh, we wouldn't make good wives. Honestly, we wouldn't. We're just a couple of kids, aren't we, darling? We, we may call for a heart, Will, but... Oh, mister, have a heart, will you? Open the door and let us out of here. We'll keep our mouth shut. I swear we will. Mr. Boyd, please. Please, please. please. please Mr. Boyd, will you... Have you quite us? finished? Then here's my answer. One of you becomes my bride. Oh, yes, my bride. I'm leaving this place shortly. When we reach our destination, one of you will become my wife. Oh, very legally. One of us. I marry only one. Then what about the other? To the ordinary man, that would be quite a problem now, wouldn't it? But to me, well, I told you I'm a realist, so the answer is quite simple. I marry one, and the other... The other? The other dies. Ladies and gentlemen, two girls apparently are forced to decide between the being who calls himself a gentle man and death. A most difficult choice to make. But before it takes place in tonight's exciting Lights Out tale, a deep breath to slow up at least my racing pulse and a moment more to consider another matter before we return to the story of Voss Triest. It's a matter that's facing many an American today. Listen. Gosh, they say I'm too old to fight and it's beginning to look like I'm even too old for this war job of mine. Why I can't eat or sleep. I'm losing weight, getting more jittery and worn out every day. I sure am discouraged. Oh, there. Don't be so quick to blame your age or your job. Maybe you simply need more vitamin B and iron. You see, when you don't get enough vitamin B from your meals, you may lose your appetite, not eat enough to maintain normal weight and strength. And when you don't get enough iron from your food, you may be weak and washed out, feel only half alive. Well, if I do need more vitamin B and iron, how can I get them? The easiest way I know is take ironized yeast tablets. These pleasant little tablets are a cinch to use. They cost but a few pennies a day, and they give you both vitamin B and iron. That's why ironized yeast tablets have worked such wonders for thousands who only needed more of these substances. Quickly help them regain their old-time pep and strength, and five, ten, even more pounds of good new flesh. So try ironized yeast tablets. If more vitamin B and iron is what you need, then see if soon you aren't saying... Who said I'm a has-been? Why, I've got pep to burn these days. I look like a new man with the pounds I've gained, and a promotion wouldn't surprise me one bit. Why didn't somebody tell me about ironized yeast tablets sooner? And now back to Lights Out. The two girls have heard the choice. One is to live, and one is to die. 
and their hysteria has grown with the terror in them. Are you quite through, my dear? How unfortunate. And after I told you how much I disliked loud talking... Don't hurt me, please, mister. Hurt you? Oh, haven't I told you? I'm really a very gentle man. Oh, yes, much too gentle. What? What are you going to do? Now, why do you ask that? The way... The way you look at it. I'm trying to decide which one shall live and which one shall die. You wouldn't kill us? Oh, just one, my dear, just one. Well, you wouldn't dare. We, we could both stay with you. I marry one, the other die. Mr. Lesson, my family, they've got money. Lots of... Now, just a I... moment, my dear, just a moment. Money to me? Well... And what will I do with it? Oh, no, one of you must die, and this is quite as good a time as any other. No, no. You look so amusing. Backs against the wall. Skin on your faces, tight with fright. So white, so fresh and young. And yet, believe me, there's nothing to be afraid of. You wouldn't kill me. I, I don't want to die. Oh, it isn't a matter of want, my dear. It's a matter of judicious selection, like nature itself. You see, sitting out here, I've had a chance to watch nature and understand her. She's very gentle, just like I am. And yet she's quite a realist. Two rabbits run before the fox, one to the right, one to the left. The fox follows one and kills. But which one? It's all a matter of chance. With gentle nature herself to choose it. And I shall choose between you two. Oh, Di, I tell you, it's not me. Don't look at me. It's chance, my dears. Yes, all is chance. Your being there and my being here. All things in heaven and on earth. Chance. Chance. All is chance. And so you'll die by chance. I won't die. I won't die, mister. Please. Please. Let me out of here. But, my dears, why be afraid? The one that lives, my bride, a calm and peaceful, happy existence. For, as you know, I'm really a very gentle man. You devil, you. I'll go to my homeland, and there I'll sit and play my violin. Oh, so sweetly and so gently. I want to live. Got to live. And the one that dies. Quick, sudden, complete oblivion. So why be afraid? M- Mr. Boyd. M- Mr. Listen, I'll marry you. Oh, sure, sure, I don't want to die. You hear me, Mr. Boyd, I'll marry you. Oh, marry no. You. Then he'll kill me. Boyd, please. Will you I'll marry you, Mr. I'll marry you. I'll marry you. Stop. Stop. Now you're making me angry. I don't like loud talking. It isn't good for me. I've been alone too long. Loud talking hurts my head. Why did you do it? Why? <laughs> You see what you did? You made me raise my voice, and that isn't good for me. Oh, no, it isn't. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Flattered as I am by your eagerness to marry me, most regretfully I must refuse. Chance must pick my bride and the bride of death. Here, see, a coin. One chooses heads and one chooses tails. We'll let chance be the chooser. No. Quickly, choose... Please don't make me angry. Choose. You little one first. Uh, Will uh, you choose? Tails. And that leaves heads for you, eh, Dot, my little friend? Heads. Chance. Chance. All is chance. So one of you flip up a coin? No. No, I think I will myself. High in the air. There. That does it. Land flat in the palm of my hand. Heads or Tails. My bride or the bride of death? Oh, Laura. No, 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 don't touch her. Let her lie there. Poor little child. Couldn't stand the strain of waiting, now could she? How unfortunate. Is it head? Oh, we must have patience. I'll hold the coin here, flat inside my hand, until your friend recovers. If she lost, it wouldn't be fair to kill her while she's unconscious now, would it? Yes, it hits. Oh, there's
There's no doubt about it, Jim. They drowned, the both of them. Yeah, I should have had more sense than to let them have the boat. A couple of city kids like that. Now, Jim, don't blame yourself. This water's treacherous. Look where the bottom of the canoe stove in. They must have hit a rock and gone right over. Yeah, neither one of them could swim. They told me that. Oh, this is an awful thing to happen. Hey, did you wire the sheriff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will as soon as we get back. Come on, let's keep on going downstream. We've got to find them. Yeah, that's right. Hey, what's that? What? Did you hear it? Oh, that. You mean that fiddle plan? Oh, I know. That's old man Boyd. Lives a couple of miles up through the valley. At least I think he does. I've never been up there, though. Hey, the wind makes it sound as if that fiddle's right here. Yeah. Well, how about going up and talking to him? Maybe he saw him. No, no, no. He's way off in the woods. He wouldn't see him. Well, anyway, let's talk to him. I tell you, it's no use, Fred. They're drowned, and that's the end of it. Downstream, that's where we'll find their bodies. Well, at least let's go talk to him. Why waste the time? Well, they might have wandered off. Oh, don't be a fool. Look at the canoe. Well, at least let's go talk to the guy. It's a couple of miles over there. I'll tell you what. We'll flip for it. Huh? Heads, we'll go up there. Tails, we'll go downstream. Oh, okay, okay. You got a coin? Yeah. Yeah, here. Here. You flip Okay. There. What is it? Ha <laughs> Tails. <laughs> well, we save a two-mile walk. You've got to tell me, is it heads? Patience, patience, my dear daughter. You must have patience. Oh, Laura's waking up. Yes, yes, open your eyes, Laura. What? You fainted. Yes, my dear, you fainted. Help her to her feet, Dottie. Help her to her feet. Come on, Laura. Oh. Now then, we're all together again once more now, aren't we? You're feeling quite well, aren't you, my dear? What? What, what was Chance's verdict? Oh, don't worry. It's all quite well. I, I live? Oh, no, the coin is still inside my hand. I waited for you. Oh. I knew you'd like it better that way. Stop torturing me. Tell me, is it head? Is it head? Alice, please tell us. Well, you've made me quite angry. I told you not to shout at me. Very angry. Yes, indeed. Mister, tell us. All right, all right. My fingers cramped a little bit from holding them closed so tightly. But now we'll see. Well, interesting indeed. Which one is it? Which one? Remember, I promised one of you the happiness of being my own dear bride. Yes. Which one? And remember, I promised the other one would have extinction, quick and sudden. Oh, which one? No. Let me ask, which one of you chose tail? I did. Then die. <coughs> oh, no need for tears for her, my dear. She died quite gently. No, no, enough of tears. For since she's dead, it's you who will be my bride. No! No, I won't! I won't! There is no choice. Chance was the chooser and you the winner. I'm a man who always goes by chance. Now get up to your feet. This one is death's bride. You make it all quite difficult, you do. Why do you persist in making me angry? Chance, chance, all is chance. You'll be my bride. We'll be quite happy in my homeland when we get there. We'll pack, get to the seashore. No. First, I'll play for you. I play so well now, don't I? Softly, softly. Doesn't the music creep inside of you like long, thin snakes? Oh, what a lonely man I was. Strange thoughts twisting in my head and no one to tell them to. But now I have someone. My thoughts, your thoughts. Yes, yes, your thoughts. And I'll watch the snakes twist in your brain. I can't stand it anymore. Now you've made me very angry. I won't play for you again. I won't. And crying loudly, too, when there's no reason. The marriage will be quite legal on shipboard. Shipboard. Yes, shipboard. I told you it was hurry, the rendezvous. I've been waiting for months. If we miss this, there'll be no more, and I must get back. And that reminds me there's something I must tell you. Yes, tell you, because I try to be a fair and gentle man. Come, over by the fire. Come, I say. There. 
just light enough. Now come into my arms. No. Into my arms, I tell you. There. Close to me. My little bride-to-be. Yes, I shall tell you everything. I suppose you wonder why a man of all my talents and education hides away in this forsaken place for all these months. Well, you shall know the reason. Look at me. Look. Closely. You see, my dear, I had a little accident. I haven't got a face. Hey, Fred. Yeah? There's something I want to tell you. Yeah, I know, I know. Shouldn't let him have that canoe. No, 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 it ain't that fella. It's the coin we flipped a little while ago. Well? I gypped you, Fred. How? Well, it wasn't tails, it was heads. You won. It's been kind of bothering me, Fred. Come on. Let's go back upstream and talk to old man Boyd, the way you said, huh? Mr. Obler. All right. I want to say something very quickly to the radio audience. Ladies and gentlemen, believe me, the story you just heard was just a story intended purely for amazement and amusement. The young ladies were purely fictional characters, and the villain existed only for the brief space of the 29 minutes during which you listened to the play. So stop breathing hard, permit your blood pressure to follow its normal, healthy rate, and as soon as Frank Martin tells you about a certain matter, I'll be back to tell you about the fast one. Friends, don't forget now. If more vitamin B and iron is all you need to help build yourself up, then try ironized yeast tablets. Remember, if they don't quickly help you to eat better, feel more like your old-time peppy, happy self. Yes, and if you're not convinced that ironized yeast tablets can help you gain the pounds you need to look better and feel better, the cost of the first package will be refunded to you in full by the ironized yeast company, Box IY, Rawway, New Jersey. Ask for ironized yeast tablets by their full name, Make sure you get what you ask for. Ironized yeast. Now, what about next week, Mr. Obler? Well, it's a mystery story. An amazing series of crimes and hit-and-run accidents which take place in different parts of a certain city, miles apart at the same moment. No one sees the auto strike the victims. No one sees the criminals. There are no clues. And yet the dead litter the streets. But that story is next week. Lights Out will come to you again next Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to listen to Arch Obler's weird story of the fast one. And if you need more vitamin B and iron, be sure to try Ironized Yeast. The one and only Ironized Yeast. With the big letters IY on the package and on each tablet. It is later than you... Did you get new clothes for Christmas? Well, there's a shortage of many clothing materials today, so take good care of those new clothes and call on Energene Cleaning Fluid to help you do it. Energene removes grease spots from your clothes, grease spots that may be harmful because they make your clothes look worn and run down and because they're the favorite feeding place of moths all year round. Energene will get rid of those grease spots in a jiffy, easily, neatly, efficiently. To get better wear from your clothes, get Energene Cleaning Fluid tomorrow. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.